Out of you, soldiers. Cheers. Welcome to the first episode of Sarge's Kitchen. Today, my co-stars feature my two rotting bananas, a wooden spoon that doesn't match any of my other cutlery, and the only baking tray that I have in a somewhat appropriate size. I was gonna film a Q&A video in front of my bookshelves. Bookshelves are not ready yet. I still need to buy a new one. Um, and just from the way that I've been unpacking stuff, it's just not... It's a mess. Not that this or this is any different. Um, but I just felt like, you know, we're gonna kill two birds, three birds with one stone? Q&A, banana bread, YouTube video. Let's go. Now, whenever I usually make, like, banana muffins, I have three bananas, but this week I only have two, so we're just gonna just see what happens. I've also never used the recipe that I'm gonna be using today ever before, um, so fingers crossed it's not gross, and if it's any good, I'll leave it in the description. This is also the first time I'm using my oven, um, and it only smells a little bit like burning. So while I mash these bananas, we'll answer our first question, which comes from TikTok. Like Tambo asks, what is your recording setup, both for booktube and for book talk. It looks very similar to what I have now. You can see my ring light reflected in my cabinets. For all of my content, I usually film in front of my bookshelves. Um, just, you know, aesthetics. I film all my videos on my Sony A5100 camera. It's okay. It autofocuses, so it has that. Why does that sound like I'm defending a shitty boyfriend? Like, well, you know, he holds the door open for me, so I can kind of forgive the fact that, like, he's cheated on me six times. I have a pretty generic tripod that I use as well, which I got from London Drugs, and I think my one that I had before that was from uh, Best Buy. I also have a ring light, which I got as a gift, but I think you can get those um, at Best Buy as well, and highly recommend. If all the YouTubers recommend to, like, film in front of a window, but sometimes it gets dark outside, or you're on the dark side of the building, or, you know, you need this half of your face illuminated, and so ring lights come in handy. We're gonna put this this aside for a couple minutes and move on to starting our dry ingredients. Looks about right. <laughs> Baking isn't always necessarily, you know, what is right uh, due to the recipe. You know, it's, it's what feels right. Oh, you thought I was gonna sift this? <laughs> That's cute. Next question by Straw Baby Witch is, Rachel, have you ever read the Poppy War trilogy? Yes, I have, um, but only the first one. Not ready to go into Dragon Republic. Can you blame me? It's like trauma distilled into a book. Wonderful, amazing written trauma, but like I'm not ready to go there emotionally yet, you know? Only a quarter teaspoon of baking powder? That doesn't sound right. At the same time, baking powder and baking soda are two of the things that you don't want to fuck around with. Boop, boop, and boop. This next one's also booktube and a book related, and that is from Amanda Nasiri. You asked me to tell the story of my booktube channel. Over the years I've learned this about myself, is that books will just somehow become incorporated in basically everything that I do. I started this channel in like 20... 14? 15? How old am I? What year is it? Which was the time that YouTube was getting really big and all the fledgling booktubers like uh, Pull and Banana's books. They were starting and I wouldn't get friends until like 2016. So what else was I supposed to do but be weird on the internet about something that I loved? Editing Rachel is hopping on already because apparently the promise of a delicious fruit cake completely distracted me from what my original answer was. So for those of you that don't know, I was a part of the acting and modeling industry in Vancouver. I modeled for about 10 years. So when I first started this channel, I was trying to mesh my love of books with the glamour and excitement that I was experiencing in the modeling world. So I was trying to tag team the kind of videos that I was making. So I remember putting out like one book video, one modeling video, one book video, one modeling video. So a lot of my very first videos are like fashion week vlogs and you know, how to walk runway and what to wear to castings. But as anything, you know, I grew and evolved and I'm no longer so entrenched in modeling as I once was. Uh, so those videos have kind of faded out, but it is kind of fun to look back and see see like what my life was like eight years ago when I started this channel. What year is it? Also at the time I was really into photography and so I had a actually quite nice camera that was really bad at video because it was only supposed to be used for like photos and I didn't know how to focus it for like two whole years. <laughs> so all of my videos from that era I look back on like girl we can't see anything. <laughs> 
what are you doing? Soft focus my ass. <laughs> and yeah, I guess as anything happens, you know, you just get better at stuff. You get better equipment, you get more prepared, you find a schedule that works for you. And here we are today, and you know, this isn't the greatest setup, and I probably will eventually get a new camera, and maybe a microphone, so I'm not like echoing into the next dimension. I'm pretty sure my neighbors can hear me making banana bread. Okay, for this next segment, I'm gonna show you my superpower, and that is I can crack an egg into a bowl with one hand and not get shell in it. talent agencies at. Great British Bake Off Hoopst. Our next question is from Please Leave Me Be, who asks for any tips on university readings. As of filming this, I have one final exam left, and then one more semester, and then I am finally, finally done. I've been doing my degree for a long goddamn time, and I am so excited to not be in school anymore. Did I mention that I'm an English major? Have I mentioned that yet? I do in fact study literature. I've acquired some tips and tricks to be able to get through all those university readings. Uh, you know, without losing your goddamn mind. No, butter? Butter. Olive oil basil, because I'm lactose intolerant. I think the number one thing that you can learn how to do is learn how to skim. Like, girl, you think that I have read every single one of my assigned reading novels word for word, back to back? <laughs> No, I sure have not. But in any degree, it is so useful to train your mind to skim paragraphs for keywords. You're gonna save yourself so much time and so much brain power. Also, 1000% pay attention to if your professor says, you know, to like pay attention to this part of the textbook or to memorize keywords before the test. Don't play Blue's Clues over here. Take the hint and study. I fully have to put the bowl down for this next one because Shh, I'm reading, asks for my top five favorite YA fantasies. Do you hate me? Do you have any idea how hard that is, especially during exam week? This is a rude question. Also, we're gonna cap this at high fantasy secondary worlds, because if we pull in urban fantasy or historical fantasy, we're gonna be here for days. Let's go. All right, Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, Merciful Crow by Margaret Owens, Ray Bearer by Jordan Nifueco, if you can't, that is YA. A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. Okay, hold on. Do we add wet to dry or dry to wet? I know it's something about like the chemical composition, but I just... Wait, this needs a mixer and a third bowl? Girl, bye. You know what? This is my video and I really don't care. So I'm adding it all at once and we're just, you know, if that makes you angry, um, feel free to leave a comment. I don't have an electric mixer, so I'm just going to use my bionic strength and mix this by hand. By the way, yes, I actually am a cyborg. I do have a very small metal implant, um, but it's in my abdomen, not in my arms. Um, but I think it's the thought that counts. These next two are in the same vein. One is by... Anna D. Jet's TikTok hat on TikTok, and then the other one is um, Anna Cipran, which is my friend, on uh, Instagram, and they both ask basically how I like my new place. I'm loving my new apartment. It's turning out to be exactly what I imagined it to be, like the layout, and I have a library wall now, which is so exciting. I'm on a quiet street, my mortgage payments are low, and like not to brag or anything. But your girl has in-suite laundry. I mean, yeah, I put a lot of money into this place and we, uh, my dad and I have been like painting and renovating for the last couple of weeks and there's still some more things to do. But for the most part, like I'm really enjoying having my own space and uh, being able to bake whatever I want, whenever I want. This is our batter, by the way. You know, she's looking good, but I think she's missing something. <laughs> oh yes. Is that enough? That's soup. I'm gonna add as much chocolate as I want. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Uh, Reese.Reads asks, what is your favorite secondhand bookstore you've been to in Canada? Now, I live in Vancouver on the West Coast, and I've never been to the East Coast, so, like, I don't know what they're doing over there. So I have two answers for this. The first one, for pure aesthetics, is McLeod's on Georgia. Rachel, it is absolutely on Pender, not Georgia. It is a beautiful, 
antique bookshop. They do have some newer stuff, but for the most part, this is where you go to, you know, get lost in an ancient library and discover old manuscripts. As soon as you enter into this place, you just get smacked in the face with that, like, old paper and ink scent. There's books stacked along the floor, they're double shelved, there's like all these little warrens you can go through, there's like glass cases that have like special antique copies of books. I've actually done a photo shoot there, I'll just put some photos up right now, it's just... You know, it just gets me right in that bookworm aesthetic. But then for like actual secondhand bookshops, um, actually there's two that I love, so I'll give you two for one. My favorites are Canterbury books on commercial and Pulp Fiction books on Main. I think those are the stores that have the best amount of stock and the best type of stock, as in it's new, it's in good condition, and it's relatively cheap even if it's a brand new copy. Usually it's like at least a little bit discounted. This recipe also asks for wax paper, but uh, I don't have any of that, so I'm just gonna butter up this tin. I guess we'll see the consequences of my actions later in this video. Hopefully that's not foreshadowing. Oh, here's a quick one I can answer while we're spooning batter into a pan, and that is from G by Grace, guys, <laughs> is my friend on uh, Instagram, asks, what's the favorite thing and least favorite thing about your move so far? Uh, I'd say my least favorite thing is the fact that I moved during a heat wave. It was not a fun time, do not recommend. And my favorite thing is probably seeing it all come together. You know, like I've, I've been thinking about it for so long and now it's all real in front of me and like anytime I've lived in an apartment it's always been with multiple other people and you know there's only so much of your own personality that you can decorate with and you know you have to coordinate schedules and like, be considerate but now I'm just like I'm gonna bake banana bread at 6 p.m. which is not a terribly unreasonable time to do that, but like I can do it, I don't have to think about anybody else. Put my art up on the walls, I don't have to worry about people being weird over the fact that I have a lot of animal bones in my apartment. Alright, this is what she's looking like pre-bake, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna pop her in the oven for... 50 minutes? 50 minute banana bread, what? This is a rip-off. And in you go. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up this, uh, and then in the meantime, you know, I'm gonna drink my drink and we'll answer some more questions, but I'm gonna move over onto my couch, which I now have, because I bought. Why do I look like I'm on a true crime documentary? I do have a few questions that I want to answer that are gonna take longer to answer, so, you know, while we have 50 whole freaking minutes, we're gonna answer some longer ones. <laughs> AJ Vrana, who's an author friend of mine, asks, what's the best and worst parts about being a bookseller? For those of you that don't know, I worked in two different bookstores from 2015 to 2019. Best part about being a bookseller? The employee discount. <laughs> I got a juicy 30% off every book that I bought, which was wonderful for my shelves and terrible for my bank account. It was also just great to work at a place with other people who love books and you just got to have that exchange, especially with strangers, being, being able to bond with somebody over something that you love so quickly it was amazing. I also met all of my close friends at my bookstore job, so that's wonderful. I had a multitude of different roles, so I was in sales, like on the floor, hand selling books. For a while I did tasking, which is when you go in in the early morning before the stores open to like put out new stuff on the shelves. I was a cash lead for a while, which basically meant that like I kind of managed the cash line of cashiers, so like, you know, like a manager position but paid less. At the last bookstore I was at, I also was an event coordinator, so I got to set up and run and host a ton of author events. And those events were so fun and they were such good memories because I I got to meet some of the people who created my favorite worlds. Like it's just, oh my gosh, it was amazing. Least favorite is kind of just like anything related to a retail job. Probably when people come in and don't respect the rules of the store, like they're being loud or they're like shoving books in random places or like leaving garbage. And for the love of God, can you please stop making out in the stacks? Like I'm sure you can find a sexier place to hook up than besides the like World War II history nonfiction books. No, I know the worst kind of people that come into the store. They are the people that yell at the like 15 year old sales reps. Take your God complex, shitty attitude and expired coupon out of my store. She's on my team and I will call security. Okay, and then the one that I really want Wanted to answer is uh, from human31177 who says dating tips are always helpful. 
Okay, all right, come have a sit. <laughs> this relates nicely to me as I am in fact single and trying to date uh, in this global panorama, but I've been in a couple long-term relationships and have made my way through some dating apps, so I feel like I have at least a little bit of experience to back me up. If you're using apps like I am, I, the number one tip for, that I can give to you is put something in your profile that somebody can talk to you about. There are so many profiles that I see that are people that are just like from Vancouver. Like, really? It doesn't have to be super detailed or complicated, but just like something that I can point at and connect with you with. If you put foodie from Vancouver, even that's better because I know that you're into food and that you like like restaurants. Add more than just a quirky one-liner because that one-liner is funny, but then ultimately I look at your profile and go, well, I guess that's all you have, and then I swipe left. That's why it's really good to have questions on your profile. So if you say that you're a movie enthusiast, maybe your question could be, you know, what was the latest movie you saw and what did you think about it? And then also on apps pertain to whether it's like a first date or if you're like a month or two in. And that is to be open about what kind of relationship that you want and are looking for. Is this first date material? I don't know, it's my first date material. Like, I don't wanna waste my time or your time. Are you both looking for something casual? Are you both looking to settle down in a committed monogamous marriage? Do you even want to get married? What are your time commitments like? Are you willing to make compromises if the other person has a different outlook on what kind of relationship they want? Issues come up when one person wants a different kind of relationship than the other person and then the other person thinks that they can change or manipulate that person into either making them the ideal partner or like tricking them into giving them the relationship that they want. And I'm not saying it's unreasonable for one or both partners to make small changes in order to make the other person more comfortable or be better fit the relationship around their lives. Going on a date or getting into a relationship with somebody that you know is looking for a different type of connection than you are, just gets really messy really fast. It doesn't really matter like how hot you find that other person, Ultimately, it's just not gonna work out. Uh, I still have 24 whole minutes. The last question that we're gonna do is from Instagram and I don't know if you want me to show your profile picture because they privately DM'd me. For this last question, you're gonna have to get editing, Rachel, because when I was reviewing this footage, I just, I said this answer super weird, but the question was if there was a house fire and I had to grab books before, you know, I, my house burned to the ground, which ones would I pick? I'm assuming this means like, a handful, you know, but like I have really long arms, so I could fully like, you know, I could I could get a good armful. So my hypothetical armful of books would firstly include my signed first edition of Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare because obvi. I also would grab The Golden Book of Fairy by O.R. Melling because that is a very hard book to find. It is out of print and it is one of my all-time favorite books that I say got me into my fairy lore obsession. I love it so much I have a tattoo of it, which uh, I'm pretty sure I've linked that video already. Another book that I would have to grab that I also have a tattoo of is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern because it is my all-time favorite book. Another all-time favorite book is uh, Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I would also grab one of my many copies of A Darker Shade of Magic by by V.E. Schwab, because that's yet another book I have a tattoo for. And one of the soft covers is much smaller than the other one, so I'd probably grab that one. And even though it would absolutely slow me down, I would definitely bring Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I know it is a full brick, but if I have to break a window to escape the fire, I could just toss that first. And then, you know, when I get to the bottom of my burning building, I'll have a book to read. And it will probably be unscathed because it's basically like a tower brick unto itself. Plus it's about dragons, so I just feel like it would be fire resistant. Ooh, and if I had time and foresight, I would go back and grab my signed first edition of Uglies by Scott Westerfeld because that means a lot to me. I would also possibly snatch The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis because, oh, and Gideon the Ninth. Oh, and Winter's Orbit. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is why I can't be in a house fire. Um, so going forward in my life, I think I'm just going to try and avoid them. Fruit loaf, fruit loaf, fruit loaf, fruit loaf. All right, always wear protection. Nothing's on fire, good sign. Ooh. Oh, this looks great. Oh my God, I wish you guys could be here to smell this right now. This smells like aesthetics, Pinterest boards and dreams coming true and like, Somebody loves me. Ooh, do you guys see that crust? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay, no wax paper moment of truth. <laughs> oh, this is gonna come up fine. Okay, where are my plates? We gotta taste test this. Oh, nice and soft. It still has that crisp on the outside. All right, moment of truth. 
God, I love being so talented. I do think that a good 30% of why I like this is just the chocolate chips. Okay, I gotta put this down. My camera battery's running low. And if I don't stop eating on camera, I'm just gonna run my battery out. Thank you to all who joined me in this baking adventure. And thank you to everybody who submitted questions. Um, I was actually a little bit nervous that nobody would, would ask, so. You guys are the real MVPs, you're the reason this video exists. And because this recipe didn't suck, I will leave it in the description box below in case you also want to check it out. And to throw in an extra freebie, I will also leave the recipe for when I make banana muffins that has significantly more percentage of banana than this does. I've been talking to myself and banging pots and pans around for like two and a half hours now, so... I don't know what my neighbors think of me, um, but they have definitely caught me talking to myself on more than one occasion. So I, at the age of 26, have just come to accept that I will be that weird lady in apartment number redacted. If being in the acting and modeling industry for 10 years has taught me anything, it's to commit to the aesthetic. Maybe next week I'll actually be filming in front of my bookshelves. Who knows? It's really all boils down to uh, if Ikea has the bookshelf that I need. I absolutely blame book talk because now all y'all have the Billy bookshelf. Supply meets demand. Y'all are killing my vibe. I need another one. Ikea. Ikea, I need you to get your shit together, okay? Because all these book talkers are out here creating a full new market for you and you need to up your production line. Please see down below if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or stories based on some of the questions that I answered today. Of course, there are many questions that I did not get to, so thank you if you submitted yours. I'm sorry if I didn't get to it. And also thank you to all of you for not asking anything weird. God bless. I was fully prepared to open my open my inbox. Like it's like it's a real box that you can just open. I was fully prepared to open my inbox and it just be like every demon from the eighth circle of hell jumping out at me with a weird question about feet or something, but it wasn't. So if you'll excuse me, I need to go wash my face and pack up the rest of my banana bread and uh, finish my like seventh San Pell in the last four days. I'm just, I'm just saying, we're brand deal opportunity right here. Like your people, call me. You know where to click like the video. You know where to click the subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye.